So that's why I'm asking, what were they thinking of in, in inviting journalists or media? Yeah, it's strange to teach you, When actually yeah. there is such tight control of their own yeah. media. Okay, yeah. because so those, I think in many <laughs> cases, as with the Emirates, this is coming from caboose. Yeah. Yeah. This is coming from the top. See, what you tend to get is, you tend to get, okay, how do I put, okay, let me give you an example. A couple of years ago, I was involved in designing a program for newsroom managers for Emirates Media, okay? And what you had was the leadership at the top, okay, which for the media was like Sheikh Abdullah, and then you had you know, the senior managers, and then you had the middle managers, and then you had the young guns at the bottom had all been to UAEU or been to HCT or got their master's degrees. And Sultan Caboose is saying, right, free everything up, open everything up, don't censor the internet, let's do this, you know, I give you my blessings to do this. And the young guys down here are going, yes, let's go and do this. And you get this bunch of people in the middle going, oh, that might upset my friend. No, but burn that story, bury that, no. Yeah. Because they've been used to a rigid hierarchy where, you know, they've been in charge, change is bad, mentally they're still terrified of upsetting a member of the royal family. Okay. Um, you know, in the old days they used to hang editors out of helicopters to make them see sense. Um, so you've got the leadership at the top yelling and exhorting and dragging and the people underneath pushing and it's like a blockage, a dense, thick, immovable blockage that can only be got rid of by, I don't know, Drano or something. But this is the problem in, in I saw it in the Emirates in the first year when I was there when Zayed was dying and everything had ground to a halt. I saw this in Oman. I don't think Caboose is long for this world. And there's just this kind of sense of we're not going to move, we won't risk anything, and so you get really ticked off people down the bottom, and people at the top trying to yank and yell and exhort, and these people in the middle going, no, I'm not going to. And that's, I think, you know, the situation I see in the Gulf, is that in fact, in many cases, the leaders are actually fairly enlightened. And they want to drag the country kicking and screaming and Kids underneath want to change, but it's that big lump in the middle that is either too scared or too set in their ways, or it's quite frankly, you know, making a killing and they don't want to be moved or released or moved on. Um, and, and, and that's the kind of dynamic. I mean, you know, a lot of my colleagues used to say that, well, we should be teaching them developmental journalism. Okay, a lot of my Indian colleagues used to say that, and I'm kind of, you know, I'm with that in a way. But that's too easily subverted to, you know, Majesty Sultan Kabu said yesterday, blah, 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 which is what you get all the bloody time anyway. And I do think that maybe in the long run, you do need to be at least making them aware of Western ideas about journalism. Look, they're never going to be Western. It's never going to be a Western-style journalism. You know, you can get this from simple things like, okay, a court report, which will be, you know, AH and BK, two Pakistanis, um, pleaded guilty to the heinous crime, blah, 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 after the police hit them a lot. You know, the court case will be heard tomorrow. I used to say to them, you know, at least we could have names of people in court cases. Oh, my God. This would cause shame to our families. You know, and then you'd say, so why do you say they're Pakistanis? Oh, well, sir, you know, honestly. <laughs> we need to know which nationalities are causing all the trouble. <laughs> You're thinking, okay, we have some work to do here. Um, you know, they, they, they just, they don't want Western-style journalism as we know it. They want some of it. Okay? They want to pick this and this and this, but they, they don't want all of it. But if you don't make at least the smorgasbord available, they won't pick anything. It's just how it's presented and how it's done, I think, is, is the trick that's been missed to a certain degree. No
the, the British know the golf The British play the game quite well, but of course. some of the tricks they learn from the British, but it's an incredibly complex. Yes, it it's is. It's like nothing that we yeah. know, you know, that's driving these people. Yeah, I, I think it's quite hard for us to understand. Mm. Well, yeah, like I said, I mean, I got to seven and a half thousand words for this, but I think I'll be 20 by the time I finish trying to cover everything. Sorry, you, you were... I'm uh, just interested, um, out of all those things go wrong, you must have known parts of it before you went there. I'm just interested, what made you go? Oh, Oman. I've always wanted to go to Oman. Um, there were particular reasons I went to Oman. Um, one of them being that it was better than the job I was offered in China. Um, and it meant I was next door to the Emirates. Um, Oman is... If you were going to go to the Middle East for a holiday, I'd say ignore Abu Dhabi and Dubai. They're big plastic soups, soups full of junk. Go to Muscat, go down to Salalah, go into the mountains and you'll see the real Arabian life. The real, the real culture. Um, Oman is a fabulous country. Stories about Oman, yeah, you know, I, my sister used to work in Oman, and I had heard, my, my sister used to come over from Oman to, to us in Abu Dhabi, you know, about once a month, and, and just scream. And I didn't believe her, I thought she was exaggerating <laughs> how wrong I was. Um, look, it's... It's a situation where... Did you think you... Did I think... Leslie could do something there? Oh, we all could have. No, we all... Any, anybody I worked with. Okay, that lovely bunch of people I showed you. Any one of them could have rewritten the curriculum. Yeah. I'd made it better. At the right level. But you've got to understand that... You're hired, therefore... You're a servant, therefore, um, your opinion is worthless at a certain level, okay? Um, there's a lot of, you know, initiative is not rewarded. New ideas are not rewarded. And the notion that a bunch of teachers are going to stand up and say, this scheme which... Her Excellency the Minister has said will work, is not working and needs to be changed? No, 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 no. Never happen. The course will be allowed to drive itself into the sand, and then it will emerge, totally rewritten, in a different form. But magically it will be the same course and everything will be perfect. That's, that's a knowledge you gained over the last year, that so that's what just the way things work. That's oh. It's pretty much the way things work. Okay, it's just, it's, it's just that it's, it's... You know about the Temkin villages? Mm -hmm. Okay. A New Zealand friend of mine <coughs> who taught at Niswa said that what they wanted in Oman in the, co in the college system was not education but the appearance of education. Okay? So, in some respects, you, you know, what we were doing was like a Potemkin village. You know, the Sultan would go by and he'll be going, God bless the Tsar. Um, everything's perfect, but in fact it wasn't. But that, that it, look, you're involving matters, matters of face, of family loyalties, tribal loyalties, what you committed to, how you survive five years down the track. It's all behind it. Um, now, I was utterly unaware of, in certain respects here, yeah, I was totally unaware of what, he, what I was getting myself into. I should have been warned during the interview with the Dean, who said, but why do you want to come to Niswa? All our students are stupid. Well, it just seems <laughs> that if you really uh, thought you might make a difference there, or you could do a difference. Yes, this could possibly be why when I saw the ad for Unitech, I applied. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say that, but I was cheeky. <laughs> but do you envisage there will be a change when the current generation of learners moves? Okay, what's going to have to happen with is age. the Sultan Caboose to die. Yeah, but there'll be somebody else with the same imposition. 
No, you could have full-blown civil war. Yeah, often in the societies, uh, you know, leadership is personified, you know, some aspiring person who died, you know. Um, I mean, it could be like the Emirates, you know. Yeah. You know, he was sick for a long time, and then one day there was a full-color picture in the paper of the new cabinet. Yeah. And we all said, oh, they're going to pull the life support system tonight. Yeah. And they did. Okay, yeah. And now maybe that will happen in Oman. Kabus will die, but before then... I mean, you know, the, man, the man's got no family, no children. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's, there's the odd court favourite, or cousin, mm -hmm. or, or... But nobody knows. And, you know, we had students who would still tell you that, oh, when, when he goes, we'll have the mate back, you know. Mm -hmm. And down in the south, the old fisherman down in Salala will tell you that, oh, well, you know, when he goes, Except they won't in the south because the British will crush them like they did the last time. <laughs> um, yeah, but you just mentioned about these 11 million, you know, under 25, uh, you know, people. Yeah, and it's very good. How long? People yeah. are bubbling and, you know, they're part of the global world, so who knows um, what yeah. is Yeah, but a lot of them remember are going to be in Saudi. I mean, the scary thing is in Saudi. Um, I mean, yeah, it, it's going to be really interesting because, you know, you're, you're getting. Okay, one of the things I probably should have mentioned was, you know, the, the number of girls who go to university exceeds that of boys. Okay, girls stay at school and go to university. Boys don't. Okay, because boys can go off and join the army, at least in the Emirates, or they can go back on the farm or go and fish or do whatever they want to. It's the, it's the young women who stay because it offers them freedom in education. Um, the boys are under all kinds of pressures. We can't, we can't even begin to envisage. They're under pressures of westernization. They're under pressures to change the way they live. They're under pressures to adopt, in some cases, different forms of Islam. They're under pressures to have to cope with watching their sisters having freedoms their mothers never had. Um, and, you know, they're, 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 they're faced with television, the internet. You know, these kids are immensely internet savvy. They really are. Um, they're powerful, they're energetic, they're bored out of their brains a lot of the time. Um, and... You know, then you get situations where you've got, say, a lot of these young kids where a lot of the young men, you know, the options are either prostitutes and alcohol or drugs, you know, with which the Emirates is knee deep. Mm -hmm. um, or in Saudi, um, some mad Wahhabi bastard telling them that they'll get to heaven quickly if they go and kill a lot of people. Um, which you'll get. I mean, you know, there's a lot of Al-Qaeda activity on the Gulf, and it is homegrown. You know, it, 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 it's, it's not people coming back from Afghanistan. There's a lot of, a lot of nasty stuff that goes on just in the Gulf itself. And you're talking about homegrown cells of disaffected people. Now, mainly in Saudi, because they're, they're the, probably the most utterly hypocritical society, but... Um, you know, they're going to be facing tremendous challenges and their population is out of control and they are totally dependent on Western, on, on expatriate labour. Um, you know, uh, I mean, I've said this to other people, two of my last, my students at Zayed, um, who came from enormously wealthy families, my biggest contribution to their life was persuading them that they could make coffee for themselves. <laughs> No, I'm not joking. You know, um, I had to persuade them that they didn't have to go to Starbucks before coming to class, which is why they were late. That they could go to the kitchen and boil water and make it themselves. And they came back to class absolutely chuffed because they'd made coffee for themselves that morning. And it was like one tiny prod in the direction that you can be self-sufficient because they've made themselves slaves to the rest of the planet, in that sense. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. No, I'm sorry. I can see why you have a hard time finish, finishing this.